Hey everybody, I'm Rick Wells of the Manual Church in Ripley, Mississippi. Over the next 10 days, what I'd like to do is offer you a time where you can just sit, listen, and relax five to 10 minutes. In this season of hustle and bustle, isn't it nice to just have some quiet time? I love everything about the Christmas season. I love the trees, I love all the decorations. I particularly like nativity scenes, so much so that I even have one on my tie. But I collect nativity scenes. Yes, that's kind of an odd thing to collect. I like tractors and I like nativity scenes. I have several in my office here in Wrigley. This one here is very, very special to me. Is is that it comes from Mexico, and my aunt, Jody, who has since gone on to heaven, she got me that as a gift one year. And I love the intricate detail and the hand painting on it. And I leave this set and the one that says Noel up all through the year. At home in my study, I have nativity scenes as well. And I keep them up all throughout the year even though they are a pain to dust, indeed. But what I thought I would do between now and Christmas morning is share each day about the different pieces of the nativity set. Today, I'd like to start with Mary. And you can hear me getting it out. There she is. She's one of the centers of the nativity scene. You have Mary, and you have Joseph, and you have the Christ child. So, why don't you sit down and relax, and let's spend a few moments together. So we're talking about Mary this morning, and I thought I would read you a little scripture out of Luke. Now, I love the fact that there's an app on the phone for all of this. And this is Luke 1, 26-38. And it's the birth of Jesus foretold. Let me share this with you. And by the way, I'm reading from the NIV, New International Version. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Well, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary, asked the angel, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. That was the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now Mary, she was a very young Jewish woman. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. We all know the story of Mary and Joseph. And she was probably between 12 and 14 years old because that was the, back then, that was the age in which girls normally got married. And so she had plans, uh, plans of getting married to Joseph. 
plans of living happily ever after, plans of having children, plans of being a homemaker, plans of growing old with Joseph. She had probably even thought and dreamed of what she would cook for her husband Joseph. But all of that changed when the angel appeared to her. Although her plans and dreams more than likely included children, I can guarantee you that they did not include a birth announcement like she just got. Any time God interrupts your plans, it's only because he's got a better idea. God did not throw out Mary's dreams completely, but he altered them. He altered them in such a way that it would change the world forever. You see, she was still going to be a wife, she was still going to be a mother, but now she would be the mother of God's son, and that would have an impact on the world for all of history. Mary's story teaches you and me about surrender. When we surrender our dreams and agenda for what God has in store for us, even if that means leaving our comfort zone, well, God does his best work in and through us. When we are out of our comfort zone, out of the box, if you will, Mary would have been comfortable being Joseph's wife, being a, a nice Hebrew young couple, having children the natural way, and simply living as a homemaker who cared for her husband, her children, and her home. But God had a different plan. Well, did Mary have a choice? Of course she did, because God gives us free will. God does not force us to do anything. He just shows us a better way. We can choose whether to follow God's will or to follow our own. But Mary could have said, this is way too complicated for me, God. It, it's too changing and it's going to interrupt my life in such a way that I had not planned. I simply cannot do that. But she didn't respond that way, did she? Mary had no idea how God's plan would play out. She had no idea what would happen to her son one day. But Mary stepped forward in faith and surrendered despite not having all the details. Like Mary, most of us won't have all the details, but we can still trust in Him. A surrendered life says, God, I am going to trust you no matter what, and I will leave the details up to you. Mary's believing response was to surrender herself to God, to surrender herself as a willing servant of God. Mary's response was that she lived to do God's will. No arguments, no complaining, no worrying about what others would say, just reckless abandon to do His will. When God calls us to do something, we simply need to surrender and say, Yes, God. When He calls us to follow Him, we simply need to say, Yes, God. When He calls us to do something uncomfortable, we need to say, Yes, God. And when He calls us in this busy season of hustle and bustle, and He reaches out in His calm voice and says, Be still. Be still. We simply need to say, Yes, God. I'll talk to you tomorrow. You have a blessed day. Bye now.